Hey guys, my name is Nikos, and welcome back to the channel. Do you find yourself exploding, getting electrocuted, or getting mauled in Lethal Company far too often? Pardon me, gentlemen. <laughs> Lethal Company is a difficult game, and that comes down to how much information the game withholds from the player, as well as the fact that the combat meta of this game is a little goofy. Not to mention everything is more powerful than you on paper, and stack threats build up to make stressful and sometimes unlivable situations. What follows is information up to date to early December 2023. The game is still in early access, and much is still not totally known about this game, even the wiki has some blanks and unknowns about it. Before we start the video, I gotta get something off my chest. In my previous video, I claimed that the first man moon landing occurred in 1972. This is blatant misinformation, and for that, I apologize. I should have never second-guessed myself, as, after all, everybody knows the first moon landing was accomplished in 1987. Alright, back to the video. For survival, there are generally two useful strategies that help you to survive on a budget. Those are railing cheese and spam scanning. As of update 45, Railing Cheese has tragically been nerfed. In previous versions of the game, it was possible to nullify the attacks of nearly all monsters by simply standing on railing or any other raised surface. No longer, as many creatures can now hit you up there. Still, one of the more dangerous monsters, the Bunker Spider, is unable to touch you while you're standing on a railing, which can save you in a pinch even after the update came out. Escaping yourself while attracting the enemy may be challenging. Just ensure your stamina bar is full before leaving the safety of the railing and booking for the exit. Spam scanning is useful if you are in dark areas without a flashlight. Spam right clicks, or whatever your scan button happens to be, to spot objects of interest and gently illuminate your surroundings. Found the apparatus. 10-4. What the? There's a cash register up here, no way. You want to do this very often in new, especially dark areas, as loot and enemies only highlight from close proximities. Additionally, the soft illumination of the scan can point out the platforms of broken catwalks for the parkour sections, which allows you to better see where you need to jump so you don't fall into the bottomless void. You have unlimited scans, so be sure to use them. When it comes to the company itself, the store page oftentimes sells items at generous discounts. I've seen zap guns go for under 100 credits, which is insane, so be sure to order extra items during these sales from the store page. That way if you die and lose an item, you have backups that took advantage of the limited time sale. When a quota is tight, in a pinch you can sell your friends for 5 credits each. You want to see something funny? Look, you get it. <laughs> Yo, come on man, open up! <laughs> Open up. This might just barely make quota and save a run. Another tip is actually about the loot in Lethal Company. The loot varies in usefulness. You can actually use some of them to help you survive. Laser pointers can provide a slight visibility boost in case you don't have a flashlight. Pew! Pew! There are also homemade flashbangs cooked up from the Anarchy cookbook that can be found throughout these facilities. These function as sort of makeshift stun grenades, but as soon as the cork is pulled, they will detonate instantly in your hand, blinding you and everything else around you. The user will also take very minor damage upon use. Stop signs and yield signs are useful weapons in a pinch. They are some of the only fatal weapons that can kill types of enemy monsters, but are very heavy and slow the player down a lot. For a more effective weapon, hit the store up and buy a shovel. It weighs less and has a cheaper value than the different signs you can find throughout the facilities. Lethal Company is much easier when you have the right tools. They range from cheap to incredibly expensive in cost. Starting with the flashlights, the green flashlight is the cheapest of the two, but isn't very bright and has a very weak short-term battery. As opposed to the Great Value Flashlight, the Pro Flashlight has a much stronger battery and a brighter beam. Welcome to Wendy's, how can I help you? Can I get a Baconator? For effective communication, buy a handful of walkie-talkies. Shovels are underrated weapons of war. 
Used effectively by the conscripts of World War I, you too can bash in your enemy's skulls with lethal precision. As I mentioned earlier, shovel warriors will find their mission has become more difficult with the nerf to railing cheese. Now, they must be more careful. Keep your distance, smack enemies while backstepping to prevent taking unnecessary hits, and again, for spiders, just hop on railing and cheese them. You can pair shovels with zap guns to net easier kills. Zap guns are pricey and require recharges from the ship's coil, much like the other limited battery items like flashlights and walkie-talkies from Lethal Company. While firing on a locked target, a zapped enemy will be frozen in place until its charge expires. This is useless in solo play. However, it is useful in multiplayer if you have a team full of shovel warriors, as they can beat an enemy down without risk of retaliation if they're quick enough. Sometimes a zapped enemy can become unzapped and start fighting back, so be very careful. Stun grenades are similar in effect to homemade flashbangs, but are far more reliable and useful. Click to pull the pin, and the grenade's timer begins ticking. Click your mouse again to throw it a short distance. Any players caught in the blast of a homemade flashbang or a stun grenade will be blinded temporarily. However, any enemies in this blast effect will be frozen in place. You will know an enemy is stunned if it is frozen and jittering about rapidly. In this state, enemies cannot attack, but they will only remain here for a short time. Stun grenades, as well as homemade flashbangs, can save a player in a high-risk escape situation. Make sure to carry one around with you if you find yourself getting into a lot of risky situations. The Ladder This is an underrated item that can insta-kill your teammates while dropping if you aren't careful, so... Oh. Be careful. This is necessary for some moons that have fire exits atop cliffs with no way up, allowing for players to loot from a second entrance. The Jetpack Lethal Company turns into an absolute circus with the Jetpack. Beloved by solo players and speedrunners alike, this rechargeable jetpack controls like the goofiest thing ever designed. And it costs a pretty penny. This may dissuade you from buying one, but experienced players may find more to like in the jetpack. They can skip over threats and fly directly to the entrances. But take caution, holding down the thruster on the jetpack for too long will result in spontaneous combustion. And fall damage is still very much a threat with this item. The radar booster is essentially an additional point to lock the ship's terminal camera onto. Additionally, with update 45, you can use pinging and flashing from the device from the computer on board the ship. Ping can attract enemies and help guide crewmates to it alike, which is useful for helping lost friends. The flash command turns it into a sort of flashbang tower, which can stun nearby enemies. Still, my friends don't really spend our time on these things. The lock picker can be used to unlock doors that you don't have a key for, but usually keys are a dime a dozen, and quite often locked doors are kind of useless as they lead to already open areas or dead ends. It's up to personal preference if you want one, I only get these on fire sales. Teleporters. These come in two flavors. The standard teleporter pulls a crewmate targeted by the ship's computer back to it, but leaves all their items behind. This is very useful for pulling an endangered crewmate or a body back to the ship. This clears the need for carrying dead bodies back manually. Why do you want to bring the bodies back? Because they can result in fairly hefty fines if you don't retrieve them. As for the inverse teleporter, this sends any player to a random point in the map, sometimes outside the map in a glitch, but it leaves their items behind. Now, I wouldn't worry about the glitch part, this only happened to us once, but it is possible to teleport into a bookshelf. Because of this, they can't take walkie-talkies in with them, so they can't report on their situation. If you leave a player behind in the ship, have them watch over the teleported crewmate closely to open doors and disable turrets for them. This could be important because once we teleported a friend in and they got stuck behind a security door. Before teleporting in, agree on a signal to report that the player needs to be teleported back. A signal we came up with because we don't have the walkie talkies to communicate is to have the player that's teleported in spin in a complete circle for a few full rotations, which informs the captain that they are in danger and they wish to be teleported back. This prevents unnecessary casualties, but remember, nothing they grab in the building can come back with them through the standard teleporter. They must find an exit. TZP inhalant is a sort of drug that gives players increased speed as well as far better stamina efficiency. Unfortunately, overusing it can come with the hidden cost of silly controls, hallucinations, and everyone will also hear you with a high-pitched voice. 
There is also a chance of addiction, although that's not actually in game, it's more of headcanon. Overdosing on TZP inhalant increases both the negative and positive effects of the inhalant. But at 120 credits, this is a very pricey consumable that runs dry fast. So keep in mind, you won't have a lot of puffs out of this thing. I want some fast food. Spray paint is a peak addition from version 45. It allows for the silliest moments, but through all the gabbin and ghoulin, it can still be used as a useful tool. Mark exit paths indoors, or mark other players with different colors of your choice to tell each other apart. The shotgun is currently, and unfortunately, unobtainable through the store. Instead, obtaining it is a high-risk, high-reward challenge. You must hunt down a nutcracker to get one, but these enemies are rare on the easier moons and very dangerous if encountered alone. Go, go, go! Back off, back off! I got it! I got it! I got no it! Go outside, go outside. I got it! I got the shotgun! Yes, sir. I got the shotgun! Hurry up, get the shotgun! The shotgun can hold two shells at a time, and extra shells consume an inventory slot each, allowing a player to fill their inventory with a loaded shotgun alongside three extra shells, making five the maximum ammo capacity. The shotgun is insanely powerful, accurate to reality. Killable entities go down with a single shot, and you can even knock snare fleas off your own face by picking up the shotgun you drop and blasting it off of you. The shotgun is awesome, but still, Coil heads and other unkillable entities are unaffected by its raw power. Be sure to reload after each shot so you can have both pipes ready to go. The eight moons of Lethal Company are quite varied, and you can find very helpful maps on the Lethal Company wiki to help you understand them. Bad weather in this game can make or break a run if crewmates aren't careful. In rainy weather, more quicksand pools will form where they normally aren't present in the exterior portions of the maps. Yeah, we got like sucked out or something. Yo, quicksand, quicksand! quicksand. Oh. <laughs> oh no! Quicksand can be difficult to spot as the textures in this game kind of blend into a brownish mush, but keep an eye out for a darker than usual brown earth. If you walk into some and begin sinking, don't panic. Simply remember this underrated strategy, the walk backwards. Just simply walk backwards out of it. In floods, the water level on a moon will gradually rise, making movement far more difficult for crewmates as the clock ticks on. Foggy conditions are just annoying. They cut visibility in the outdoors to mere meters. Try to memorize basic directions to and from the bunkers and facilities as well as the ship. If someone happens to get lost, you can always use the ship's computer to guide them back to the ship. Stormy weather is perhaps the most dangerous of these conditions. Don't carry anything metal, including walkie-talkies, flashlights, or even keys. Lightning will strike each of these objects on periodic intervals, whether you're carrying them or not. When looting on a stormy day, there is a sign that lightning will strike metallic objects, so follow this technique. You will see a spark appearing just above these metal objects as they're about to be struck, and you will also hear a faint sparking sound effect or zapping sound effect, however you want to describe it. If you begin hearing this sound while carrying metal objects, drop them all and get to a safe distance. After lightning strikes the object, head back and pick it up. Rinse and repeat each time if you hear a static electricity sound effect. It's easy money, except other monsters may find you a slow, distracted target, so keep an eye out for them. Nicely done. I'm about to get zapped. Okay. Clear. It's about to strike me. I'm good, I'm good. Storms do make looting more difficult, but it is very possible to get out a lot of metallic and valuable objects without getting zapped. Eclipse conditions are very difficult to deal with. Have your crew be quiet upon landing in case eyeless dogs are lurking around the ship at day start. And if a forest keeper is stalking the ship, if you have an inverse teleporter, it may be beneficial to teleport one or more of your crewmates in for a desperate loot grab. That, 
or sneaking around the Forest Keeper if it is at all possible may be your only way out. Keep your head on a swivel here. Before landing on a moon, recheck weather conditions as they can change each day. You can see them on the terminal next to the names of the moons on the moons list. Now let's talk about some of the interior facilities of these moons. Many monsters spawn from vents. If you find an open vent, be aware that anything, be it sort of friendly to very deadly, could be lurking throughout the facility. Defenses in the facility, such as security doors and turrets, can be interacted with from the ship's terminal. A good strategy to dealing with these issues is to leave a man behind on the ship and have them talk to the team through walkie-talkie. Fair warning, if an eyeless dog hears you talking or moving around too much, they will enter the ship and attack you. Additionally, you will need to deal with landmines throughout the facilities. Simply don't step directly on them. It's easy as that. Don't do it again! <laughs> no, no, I didn't. If you do step on one, they will detonate as soon as you hop off of it. If you are stuck on a mine, try getting a teammate to teleport you out if you have a teleporter. Make sure to clear the area first, or you could even try to draw a monster to the mine for a sacrifice, as mines and turrets are only triggered by players and not monsters. <laughs> One final note, and that is steam. Sometimes, a steam pipe can bust and hinder the vision of an entire section of the facility. You can cut the steam flow if you manage to find a red valve out in the darkness. Head towards the source of the steam noise, or search for a defined white stream of steam and blindly feel around for that source and turn the valve to stop the steam flow. Now we will get into each of the moons. I'll give them a brief overview. Keep in mind, you can find more information on the Lethal Company wiki. Experimentation, the first moon, is very straightforward. For each moon, I'll be explaining the top side enemies, which are the creatures that can spawn on the surface of these moons. Although, it's not guaranteed you will run into all of these monsters, or even some of them. It's totally random in this game how things spawn. Assurance, the desert twin moon of experimentation, is a little more advanced and easier to get lost on. Remember the general direction of things, and don't get this map confused with a fence. Vow, the first of the forest moons, features two bridges, one that offers a shortcut but is rickety and has the potential for collapse under weight or multiple players. I've seen three people collapse it before, and also two people collapse it as well. More weight seems to anger the bridge so proceed with caution. There are two medium difficulty moons, and as for loot on these moons, as difficulty goes up, loot and their value scales with it. Offense is the third desert moon. I get it confused with assurance quite often. This one is very different. The fire exit requires either a trick jump onto a pipe as the ship is landing, or the much safer extension ladder set onto the cliff leading to it. March is a personal favorite moon of mine. It offers an impressive three fire exits alongside nearly every enemy in the game, and even pools of quicksand no matter the weather conditions. The main entrance is just a skip and a jump straight across from the ship. It is a simple layout that is hard to get lost in. Now onto the hard moons, which are all frozen over and under constant blizzard, demolishing visibility. Each of these costs money to travel to, which is usually worth the cost, as the loot on these moons is usually worth far more in value. Rind costs 550 credits to travel to, so make the choice to travel here wisely and ensure your team is ready for it. Follow the lamplit rope to find the entrance, but don't continue down the rope path. Hang a left at the end of the ropes to find the entrance. Make sure you're scanning while you're approaching the entrance, that can also help you find it. Dine costs 600 credits to travel to, and it also has a lamplit pathway through the snow. Follow this path to the main entrance and scan through the wind to find it from a distance, or look for the wall. It isn't too far from the lamps. Head immediately left from the ship's exit to find the fire exit on a cliff. Bring a jetpack or extension ladder to get up to it. Titan, the big kahuna. 
This moon costs 700 credits to travel to, and it is very high risk, high reward. This is the most dangerous and rewarding moon in the game. Both the entrance and the fire exit can be accessed from the stairs right adjacent to the ship. Keep in mind, eyeless dogs can climb the stairs. We learned that the hard way, so try to leave sooner rather than later, especially because on this moon, much like all the hard moons, you will be running into much more difficult enemies such as the Jester and Ghost Girl much more often. Now that we've covered pretty much everything you need to know about the moons, equipment, and more, let's cover the most interesting part of Lethal Company, and that is the monsters. We're going to start with the indoor threats that you can find in the bunkers, facilities, and mansions of Lethal Company. The Hoarding Bug is one of the friendliest entities in the game. They typically get angry only if you pick up items around them, or if you stay around them for too long, and their attacks output fairly low damage. If you do happen to anger one, either leave the area or get your shovel ready. They only take a few shovel swings to kill, but do keep in mind hoarding bugs can become a threat if there's multiple of them. Spore lizards are also fairly innocuous. They only attack players who get up in their face, and even then they do really minimal damage. They will release pink clouds of spores when in danger. But these spores are harmless, they mostly serve to blind the player. They are mostly all bark and no bite, but try not to get these confused with thumpers, who are far more dangerous, but look fairly similar from afar. One way to sniff out a spore lizard is they have a distinct walking sound that kind of resembles a bouncing sound, or you check that purple ball on their tail and you'll know for sure. Snare fleas are very dangerous as they often chill in places that aren't checked by players. By hiding above doorways and even atop chandeliers in the mansion bunkers, they can prove difficult to spot. You can use weapons to free victims of snare fleas, but if a shovel or sign isn't available, guiding an afflicted crewmate by your voice to an exit can help them blindly escape the facility and force the flea off of them. Additionally, guiding them off a ledge or into a mine can kill both the doomed crewmate and the flea, so if there's no other options, might as well take out the flea with them. Much like many of the other indoor threats, they spawn from open vents. If you see an open vent, check the ceilings as you may just find a snare flea lying in wait. Bunker spiders are territorial and highly dangerous if active. If found, try to leave doors shut and avoid areas they inhabit to keep them away. Generally, these spiders lay asleep on walls or the floor, but they will wake up if they or their webs happen to be disturbed. Their attacks fire in rapid succession, making a pseudo one-shot kill on crewmates very possible. However, if you time a sprint, you can barely manage to survive a lethal attack by one, as their hits bring you to just about critical damage. While these oversized tarantulas seem scary on paper, they turn into Mickey Mouse enemies if you bring a shovel. On the industrial facility maps, simply attracting one to a railing or raised object, then hopping onto the raised platform and smacking down on it five times will kill it with no threat to the player. Although in update 45 it seems some of these railings have been made harder to jump onto, so test the railing <laughs> before jumping on it. Th this just sounds so absurd, but this is legitimately the strategy. Hygro deers are slow moving slimes, simply just walk away from these. According to the wiki, they are attracted to sound and boomboxes can help distract one, but I have not been able to test this myself. They creep across the floor very slowly, but are indeed still lethal. Still, don't stress too hard about these slimes, just make sure they don't block you from a way out and you're good. These creatures are highly resistant and cannot be killed by shovels too, but they can be stopped by closed doors, so feel free to trap them. As long as one player has direct eyesight on a coil head, they are unable to attack or move. If you must sneak around a coil head, keep your eyes on it as you brush past to prevent immediate death. It can be beneficial to get your friends to help watch it, and sometimes if there are other threats coming after you all, trade off watching it with buddies to help get each other out of the facility or the area of danger. Typically coil heads will insta-kill players, but if one smacks you from the side, you might survive at critical damage if it enters eyesight as it's attacking you. Oh shit! <gasps> okay, let's keep it cool people! Monster attacks in this game are fairly unpredictable, so you may be surprised when you survive certain attacks. So, just count your blessings if you do manage to make it out of one of these attacks alive. You can also use a stun grenade to temporarily disable one if you need to make a quick escape. 
Thumpers deal damage quickly with numerous bites. They move fast, so confuse and slow them down by going around corners and bins. Listen to the characteristic cha-cha slide move they pull off nearby to know one is present. These can pose a great danger, but they can be killed with careful shovel usage. Zap guns can also help out in killing these. Flower Man is genuinely freaky, but can be stopped easily by simply watching your back. If you catch him sneaking up on you, do look away once he starts to retreat or otherwise he will rush you. Just peek at him, but don't stare, it will enrage him. Sometimes he can be bugged out and rush you even if you peek at him for a second if he feels cornered or like there's nowhere for him to retreat to. And in this case, if Flower Man does chase you, run around bins and sprint away as fast as you can. Corners confuse him, and if he loses you, he will slink back to a patrol pattern and probably not come back around for a little bit. While he is killable by shovel, he one-shots players, so I wouldn't really recommend trying it. He also likes to drag his victims to a predetermined location. As of the last Lethal Company video I created, there was confusion on if he dragged bodies to the quote-unquote Bracken room seen across the interior facilities. This is indeed a myth, and further examination has found that the Bracken room is simply an unnerving, empty office that never has anything interesting to offer. The Jester is perhaps one of the rarer entities in this game and is simply one of the most terrifying in the game. The Jester cannot be killed. As soon as one is spotted, leaving the facility is recommended. The Jester will follow players around for a brief period before beginning to wind itself up. Once the song ends, the Jester will pop, charging players at a blistering speed. According to the wiki, zap guns and stun guns can delay this pop move, but this will only delay the inevitable. It's time to go. The Jester is a persistent threat. According to the wiki, the Jester will close up and return to a box mode after no one is left inside the facility, so I suppose you could re-enter and make a last ditch loot grab before it finds you again, but generally as soon as there's a Jester, your run's kinda cooked on that moon, <laughs> you kinda just gotta pack it up. Now update 45 did add two new monsters to this game and I'll be covering them right after this next section as we go over the outdoor threats and the creatures that lurk outside of the facilities of Lethal Company. Eyeless dogs can hear nearly everything, so be sure to sneak by while crouched and don't say a word through your microphone. It will even hear background noise from your microphone, so clicky keyboard users are easy dog food. Turn your microphone gain or volume down to a comfortable level to avoid catching all the background noise in your own room. Funny how there's an IRL meta to surviving these dogs. They can hear you dropping items, sprinting, and walking, so again, crouching is preferable for sneaking by them. They can hear you talk through your walkie-talkie, but they cannot hear other players calling through your walkie-talkie. But they can actually hear you turn the walkies on and off. Strange, just don't go turning the thing off, and don't go talking around these guys and sneak by and you should be okay. Also, eyeless dogs take far too many hits to kill. Be careful if you stay behind in the ship to play captain. They might just overhear you and walk through an open ship door. If you move to close the ship doors to protect yourself from outside monsters such as eyeless dogs, keep in mind they only stay shut for a limited amount of time, so use these sparingly. Stick to the tree lines and stay out of sight. These giants have incredible eyesight, and my friends and I have come to find that they have no hearing. But the wiki mentions that they do have subpar hearing, so... It is likely that they may have some hearing, but from my experience their hearing is so weak it's not really any concern for your survival. Forest keepers usually stick to a patrol around parts of the map, sometimes around the ship, so escape can often be challenging. But when they are in chase, they move very fast. Drop everything you have and sprint at full speed if you are being pursued by one. The extra weight lost can make the difference between life and death. Wait for the giant to walk off, then return to grab your dropped loot. That window for retrieving the loot can be tight, so play smart as you'll be taking a big risk going back outside. These guys are unkillable, 
In a pinch, you may be able to hide under the ship on some moons, which can protect you from these giants. And if a crew member is caught by a giant, you can teleport them out of the giant's grasp to save their life. You will be safe within the ship, as giants cannot reach into the ship even though they can clip through it, so typically try to stay either inside the facility or inside the ship when giants are present. Baboon Hawks attack isolated players, or attack when the size of their troop exceeds the number of players that are walking in a group. They are fairly resistant to shovels, so try to avoid them if possible. Most of the time, they won't strike, instead they will often linger around or fight eyeless dogs, which creates a perfect window of escape from these distracted enemies. I've also seen that they can be intimidated when you shout at them. So save your worst insults for these guys and start shouting at them. Yeah! Yeah, you better run, punk! Yeah! Yup, see ya. <laughs> Run the opposite direction the moment you start hearing or feeling rumbling underneath you and see black flakes rising. Drop everything for extra speed. These worms are unkillable and not to be trifled with. If you hear that roaring, again, run. Just immediately run. You will not be able to escape unless you do. They show as a massive red dot on the ship's computer. A fun fact for you, these worms can kill forest keepers if they happen to emerge from under one. If you get too close to circuit bees, they will attempt to swarm you. Run the opposite direction and drop your inventory to gain extra speed. If you wish to steal a beehive, have one player draw the bees away from the hive. Then grab it and drop it on the front of the ship. A single player can manage to extract a hive themselves, but it is highly dangerous and requires great practice and preparation. Be aware that the bees may return to the hive at any time, so exercise great caution. Do not put the hive inside the ship or in front of the entrance at the back of the ship. That will just end in unnecessary deaths for your friends and teammates. You want to put those hives on the front of the ship, outside the wall. Upon takeoff, any hives on the outside catwalk of the ship will take off with you, but you need to move quick before you enter orbit. The hives will despawn when you enter space, so run out there and grab it as you're taking off. Manta coils and roaming locusts are completely harmless. If you run into birds or swarms of insects, you may pass by them without danger. Don't get the locusts confused with the circuit bees. Circuit bees are mostly going to stick to their hive unless they attack the player. Alright. Now we begin to get into the update 45 enemies. Masked Mimics are one of the coolest new enemies added to the game. Akin to the Mask SCP, comedy and tragedy masks can be found throughout the moons on occasion. These sell for a decent credit value at the company but are also incredibly dangerous. Well, as long as you don't activate them and instead keep them in your inventory. Morbid curiosity and trolls are the only threat when it comes to these masks. If one does choose to place a mask on their face, they will be killed and their body will be possessed and forced to hunt down their former friends. If they catch a player, they will grab and kill them before converting them into another mast. The mast can spawn on its own on some moons, even in solo play, which actually has lore implications. These masks are the fallen of former crews that litter the abandoned moons. How do you kill a mast? They take a handful of shovel hits or even a shotgun blast down, but they will get back up after taking a short nap, so be wary. You can identify one as a masked from afar if they are avoiding scrap or lurking without speaking. Or if a crewmate rolls in while you're in single player all Herobrine style. One additional tip is you can always know where masked multiplayer teammates are, as if they were your friend previously to being masked, they can still be seen through the ship's terminal screen. Masked friends will spin constantly if left alone in a room, as if they are letting players at the ship know that they are ready for a teleport. Creepy. Practice good judgment when teleporting a crewmate if you have a suspicion that they may be masked. Nutcrackers are the Christmas-themed enemies of Lethal Company, and they are fairly festive. And deadly. Listen for what sounds like heavy, metallic, wooden-esque marching. These guys will also move towards sources of noise, so keep it down if you have to. Nutcrackers have two attacks. They periodically lift their head and rotate around in a scanning mode, and will attempt to identify and shoot any player that is moving or looking around with their mouse during this mode. This scanning and shooting mode is not to be trifled with. Try to avoid a nutcracker if you run into one unprepared. Their second attack is a guaranteed insta-kill, and that is their nutcracking kick. Not only do they take your life, they take your kids too. 
They are able to be killed, and this is very difficult to pull off while solo, thanks to the kicking attack sniping any would-be shovel warrior who approaches a nutcracker. So try to gang up on a nutcracker with a zap gun and multiple shovels. The zap gun can pin a nutcracker down and disable it for the shovels to get to work. Keep in mind that the nutcracker has to reload in between shots, which makes a good window for attack. Your reward for killing one is its own shotgun, complete with extra shells. Lore-wise, I suppose these are just Christmas-themed organic sentries or something. I don't know, they're pretty sick, though. Now for the most elusive entity currently in-game. The Ghost Girl usually can be found on the more difficult moons, but like the Jester, she can rarely be found on others as well. The girl usually spawns and targets a player based on specific criteria. If you want more specific information, check the wiki. But essentially, she will target players who stack up points. For instance, the most paranoid player, or the one who turns around the most, receives points. If a player is critically injured, they also receive points. Points are given based on holding items worth more than 150 credits, and also how insane a player is. Sanity is a complex mechanic, but in short, sticking indoors increases insanity and so do the later hours of the day. Sticking beside your team or hearing friends through the walkie-talkie lowers your insanity level. The Ghost Girl, all in all, is focused on playing with players' heads, as well as removing them. Whenever the girl spawns and selects a target, only that player can see her. I heard... Wait, wait, stop. Oh, shit. Find you, Nikos. What? Do you not see her? Do you not see that? That means she's after you. I don't see oh, there's, there's... Many signs of a haunting can be seen between flickering lights and auditory hallucinations, such as hearing the girl's voice calling for you. The girl will then begin hunting a player after some time. When you catch it skipping away, it is confirmed to be hunting you, so it will then stalk that targeted player for some time, messing with the player's head with auditory hallucinations even further. The Ghost Girl is an entity that can leave the facility and chase players outside, even into the ship. If they catch up with a player, they'll behead them on contact and begin to move on to its next victim. One weird quirk about this girl is that you can see her on the ship's exterior camera monitor, even if you aren't being hunted by her. Additionally, you cannot scan the ghost girl, and she is basically a permanent persistent threat. Players should be focused on making their way off the moon, but haste isn't totally required as the girl seems to take a lot of time toying with their first target. There are numerous theories as to who this girl is, and one states that it is possibly Jess from Sigurd's logs, but this is highly unlikely to be true. It is probably just some rando spirit. And that is it. That is everything. This concludes my comprehensive guide to surviving in Lethal Company. We covered the equipment, the moons, monsters, general strategies, and more up to date for update 45. Stay safe out there, and always remember, sometimes it can be beneficial to roll in without all the expensive gear. The extra hands, coupled with your wits, proper communication, and spam scanning dark areas may well just net you more money and loot than going in with shovels and flashlights. But just know it is a bit riskier. Hope this guide helps. And if you haven't yet, check up on my previous lore video explaining the lore and data logs of Lethal Company. You won't regret it. Just know the survival tips here are more up to date. If you like videos like this one, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.